during the time the government was moving people from the cities or from the better places they occupied, people refused to move. Hence, there is a writing, where is my home? This guy is trying to warm himself with the cold and it's cold. He has no shelter. Where is he going to sleep? Where is he going to get food if he is not working? It's very painful. Because the government was confused and could not control the influx of the people, he agreed that if they build these shacks, they should share them. Families should share the shacks. This is a house. At night, there's a woman near the stove with the baby. I think the husband is at work. He hasn't come back yet. This is the bed. There are three people sharing the bed. In those olden days, you'd find that others would sleep on the floor. you find six on the floor, sharing two blankets. Three on top, three downstairs. That's how bad it was for people to have a shelter. You'd even find families under forum, let's say, 15? family members or 15 families, different families, sharing the same roof. Most whites wanted the city slums to be cleared away, especially after 1934 when the law allowed people to be evicted even though no housing had been provided for them. Landlords of the slum yards did all they could to delay or even stop the clearing of the slums because they were making a lot of money from high rents. You cannot do without the labor of Africans. And you must realize that Africans cannot do without home. The truth about Shandy Town. A pamphlet by the advisory board of Eastern Native Township and the Western Native Townships, Orlando and Pimville in the 1940s. Work, no home. How can you work without a home to stay? Where do you go to when you come from work? What do you prepare for tomorrow? Because when I go to work, I go home. I do my ironings, my things, I cook, so that tomorrow I know I'm going to do this and this and this at work. Work, no home. We have brought the native into our cities to work for our advantage and enrichment, not his 
in return we reward him with a niggardly wage which most people would agree hardly suffices to keep body and soul together. We make and enforce laws which keep him out of European areas but we fail to set aside adequate land for his habitation elsewhere. Councillor D. H. Epstein, 1947. The government needed to be fair, but it was very, very stubborn. Even though the truth is clear, it was very, very stubborn during that time. We feel that even if we are not as civilized as members of the white race, we still have a share and a claim to this country. Not only is it the land of our ancestors, but we have contributed to the progress and advancement of this country. We have sacrificed many lives in the mines. We have built this city and we claim we should have a place. Them. It's a coating of them. South African Native Congress, 1923. segregation. The advantages of keeping the native quarters from the white population would be obvious to everyone whether one considers the interests of the native or those of the poorer class of Europeans. Many facilities for keeping order and for efficient sanitary control will be afforded. 1904, 12 October. Slamyards in the closing of insanitary houses. The authorities are compelled to hold their hands at present owing to the absence of other accommodation. Report of the Medical Officer of Health, 1919 to 1920.